Hello, I mean, good Hello. to see you. Good to see you. Yes, I am Elbow Shakers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's kind of talk about your company, I mean, because it will be beneficial to the audience to hear about German Bionics and what you're doing and what your innovation is in robotic space and how it can impact our lives. So could you get some historical perspective, innovation perspective, and also where you're going? Absolutely, thank you. So exoskeletons, this is what we do. So we want to support the humans where they have some weak points. And actually most of the humans on this planet sooner or later get some back problems because of heavy lifting or other um, uh, related issues. Mm -hmm. And we are having an exoskeleton which actually helps people to reduce the, the pressure on the, on the back. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do with our Cray X exoskeleton device. Mm -hmm. And actually we also brought one here today. So the audience and you can see the, our latest model which we will launch in June. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited that Christian um, is here and can show the device. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can look at it right yeah, now. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, Perfect. why not? All right. Hello. Christian, good to see you. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, this is our fourth generation exoskeleton, Cray, Cray X, and we're very proud of that. So this device actually helps people who have heavy workload every day um, to reduce the, the pain on the back, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the most common injuries actually in the logistic area and the production area. Mm -hmm. And with that device on the left and right, we have gears and actuators. So it's an active exoskeleton. And it supports Christian in this case now up to 30 kilo. So every time when he lifts something, it supports him um, and reduces the, the pressure by 30 kilo. This is quite impressive. Also the device is IoT connected. So basically you can interact with the smart factory and um, have a completely connected um, uh, usability um, improvement. So you have uh, data on huge movements and uh, be able to have a profile of information that can give you a better algorithm in the process? Or? Absolutely. So the device itself learns, so it's kind of machine learning, mm -hmm. that it detects how the movements from Christian are and actually improves them um, personally on, on his behavior and his height, weight, etc. Mm -hmm. So this is quite, quite impressive. Well, Christian, how's your back? It's very good. First, and what you can see, it's super nice and straight when I lift something also. Mm -hmm. It's good and it fits like a backpack. Mm -hmm. So Great. normally people don't want to take it off after they, they work with that. I think this is um, the best um, feedback we can get. That's great. How heavy is it? 7.5 kilo at this point. Uh -huh. um, we're continuing to um, get a lower number in the future, but already the weight is completely mm -hmm. Um, accepted by the customers. So uh, like how much operations can you do with uh, uh, the way it's organized? Can you go on many cycles in a long time? You could potentially work up to eight hours with one battery, mm -hmm. um, and, but you could swap them. This is like a normal battery also for drilling machines. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, obviously the workers need to take a rest from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, it's very easy to take it off, take it on, um, which is quite critical to have the acceptance from the users. Mm -hmm. Someday I think I may need one when I'm exercising with my kite surfing or something like that, which has a lot of stress in your back point. Yeah, so right now the device is mostly for the industrial use case, mm -hmm. but looking ahead in the two, three years, mm -hmm. definitely there will be different verticals we will support, like sports, elderly care, etc. So this is just the start of helping humans to be more healthy and more efficient, basically, um, in yeah. the long run. I mean, this pandemic time, one thing we learned was that the demand for delivery goods went up. So Amazon, Walmart, and others are all struggling to keep up with. And biggest problem seems to be the workers. They can be able to manage the load and demand that are, that are really happening in a um, present time. So how you manage that workforce in a healthier and ergonomic way seems to be a big challenge and maybe this is a good solution that could help on that type of applications, yeah? Absolutely, so it's about keeping the workforce healthy mm -hmm. and also motivated to do work, which is of course not so easy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And this is really the, the key what our device um, supports. 
-hmm. a lot of companies right now. So let me ask you more more difficult question, but it costs money, right? It's not free. So uh, if uh, Samsung want to use it, um, for instance, in our warehouse to help our workers to move products, how much would it cost? What's the business model for you? So we, we saw that our customers mostly um, and prefers a so-called robotic as a service model, which means it's basically you rent the device on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And actually, as low as 699, you can start per month um, using the device. So the entry barrier is very low um, and it's very well accepted. Um, but the benefit, and I think this is the most important thing, how can we show the, the customer what is the return on invest? Mm -hmm. And this is actually, you can calculate mm -hmm. If you use such a device, you can calculate how more efficient and productive a uh, user is and more healthy, which is right. especially important if you have a downtime mm -hmm. because of sickness. Right, absolutely. So that sounds like a reasonable entry price to adapt and deploy as a way to support very, uh, in a way, back-breaking work, right? That's what they call it in America. And uh, it seems to be a very interesting application to do that. Mm. So thank you for uh, thank you, Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean that was really interesting demo, and I really thank Christian to helping us to show uh, how uh, backbreaking could be saved through uh, technology. Right, it's a great application. But tell me about a little bit of a history about the company, how it began, where did the technology come from, and the um, and how did you also get involved personally? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So 2016 actually is the date the company was um, fun, founded and funded. Um, nevertheless, the, the development goes even back to 2011 mm -hmm. when my cousin actually um, started um, developing exoskeletons in an EU-funded project mm -hmm. and actually the results then became German Bionic. Mm -hmm. And actually Augsburg, where the company is located, is kind of the central hub for any kind of robotic development in Germany. Mm -hmm. So in, in the world you have like robotic clusters in Switzerland, mm -hmm. then in Augsburg, Germany and in Japan. So these are the most mm -hmm. strong environments and right. this is why it's possible to also do a, such kind of product. Very good. So you have a really good historical DNA where the uh, robotics innovation came from and will continue to do it. Um, now, uh, for you though, personally, how did you get involved? Obviously, it sounds like your cousin is in founder, yep. inventor, so that makes sense. But my understanding is you are ex-CEO, you are entrepreneur, so why did you decide to pick this particular one and, the, uh, and, and what has been your experience? Yeah, I was doing several other startups in the past. Um, some of them were acquired, the last one to Here Technologies, and after the acquisition, um, I, I really wanted to focus on something which, which changes um, and helps the humankind. And mm -hmm. actually because um, the company we founded in 2016, I said, okay, I will go in full time to, to really drive this business and the opportunities in this market. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a process where I said, let's really change something. And this is quite exciting. Yeah, it is a uh, potentially big impact on really all of us, right? We all age. We all have back pains, we all have knee problems, and all have some kind of issues where assistance uh, with the proper technology could be very useful. So that makes a lot of sense. I think many elderly people fall down, and when they fall down, they break, and that's the beginning of downfall for their health, right? So if you can be able to manage those things better by, by helping them, assisting, that makes some more work opportunities that could be even bigger than from enterprise or the consumer side. Absolutely. So we started with industrial, with the use case, logistics, etc. Mm -hmm. But as you said, um, definitely helping mm -hmm. older people, elderly care workers in hospitals, mm -hmm. in sports. But actually there are a lot of use cases where you can enhance or support the body. Mm -hmm. um, an analogy is basically the, the glasses. So the glasses also make people more productive and keep them in, in the in the working environment for a much longer time than it was possible before the invention of the glasses. That's true. Absolutely, there's just so many technologies that change the way we do things. Yeah. Motors, right? Fundamentally, motor changes the whole industrialization. Absolutely. And uh, so, uh, obviously, the, uh, you talked about cloud and AI and mobility data. Uh, and how important is that for your business? 
In the, in the first place, of course, the customer looks at the product from the mechanical point of view, how much it can support you. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, all the intelligence you can create by the data, as we know from a lot of other hardware devices, mm -hmm. is quite substantial for the success of any kind of company. Mm -hmm. So the data which is collected for machine learning, for smart factory, IoT, mm -hmm. um, um, Industry 4.0 as we call it in Germany, um, is, is quite critical for the success of our company, but also for um, improving the products in the future. Mm -hmm. So it fine tunes the algorithms with the cloud information, you can refine and then improves the experience of your applications. So, I mean, you know, given this exciting journey that you've been on with this, this technology, tell me about the uh, end use cases that, that you have seen. Uh, what are some of the different use cases and what are most exciting things that, that you personally feel about? Yeah, so use cases mostly as we focus on industrial or logistic workers is everything where heavy um, lifting is, is, is needed. A lot of things you cannot fully automize mm -hmm. and we need humans um, for that mm -hmm. and we want to empower them. So for example, one use case we're very proud of is basically in the logistic environment, unpacking, packing heavy boxes. Um, the other use cases are tire changing, um, which in a lot of can be heavy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think a SUV tire is up to 60 kilo, um, wow. so it's it's very heavy and a heavy workload. The other thing is in airports, mm -hmm. all these baggage lifting from mm -hmm. is all done manually, right. and you you can support and help so many people on that. Mm -hmm. So these are just a small part of a lot of use cases we already deployed, mm -hmm. um, which help people uh, every day. Mm -hmm. So let's change the subject a little bit because I think we got a good sense about what your mission is, what German Bionix is about, what use cases, uh, how we can benefit humankind. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, competition. So who are the kind of players they're competing with and how do you stand up? So we see mostly Japan as the, the core um, robotic experience um, area. So you have a lot of very, very good um, robotic companies in Japan like Fanuc, um, Yaskawa, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so you have also a lot of exoskeleton companies who do also active systems like us. Mm -hmm. And we see them as the most advanced compared to us as well. So um, nevertheless, our product right now from the spec wise and also support acceptance, we think is the best. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we will see a lot of newcomers coming in the coming years from the Europe, from the United States. Um, so, nevertheless, Japan right now is kind of the, the gold standard. Mm -hmm. I guess the good news about having more competition is endorsement. This is a good place to be. Absolutely. Right? So, tell me about as a CEO of a startup company uh, and, you, and, and what are the, some of the challenges that you have to manage time like this and how do you um, uh, manage the uh, difficulties uh, as a CEO? I think what I learned in the, in the years as being an entrepreneur, so the team is the most important part of every company. Mm -hmm. So the team is the core. Um, they do the work, but on the other hand, they, they also are the DNA of a company. Mm -hmm. And we are very lucky to have a very good team, mm -hmm. especially also in, located in Augsburg mostly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very motivated, very um, highly experienced team. Mm -hmm. But yeah, keeping the team Focused, happy is the, is the key, especially in these difficult times right. where everyone needs to work together to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of other companies did similar thing, trying to support the team, support the motivation of the team. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, uh, so especially now when people are not all coming together, you have to do it in kind of remote way and you have to figure out ways to get them connected Virtually, I guess, yeah. So we actually also started, like all other companies, mostly um, work from home. Nevertheless, our production needed to continue. Mm -hmm. So we took all the measures to make it um, safe for, for the workers. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, um, um, because we are doing hardware, we need to be on location. Um, mm -hmm. Like a fully digital company like um, Shopify, which just announced they do everything from home mm -hmm. or basically remote work in the future. Right. This is something we cannot do, yeah. um, but there need to be kind of a flexible system to make this happen mm -hmm. also in the future. Because yeah. you do have a physical device Absolutely. that you're inventing, you're developing, you're testing, you're validating. It's hard to do it through software only. Yeah. yeah. So even during the Corona times in, in, 
the very serious times in, in April, mm -hmm. um, our, um, our team was still in contact with our customers and because they had to do the work. So um, That's true. It's, it's a mission different. critical, right? Someone has to deliver products. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Well, I uh, really appreciate your time and I think that I uh, wish you a successful journey with the uh, very important technology aspect that can contribute to uh, our mankind. Thank you, Young. Mm -hmm. Highly appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you.